Hi everyone, uh, so welcome to the project introduction for how to create a cryptocurrency payment system in Node.js. Uh, my name is Elliot Mins, I've worked on a few previous projects here on LiveVU as you can see on the left hand side there, mainly focused in the cryptocurrency space. Um, I work as a cryptocurrency engineer and you know work on various different coin projects and things like that. So what we're going to be talking about in this series is basically we're going to be covering what it takes to add cryptocurrency payments to your website. Uh, so why would you want to do this? Maybe you currently use something like Stripe or PayPal and are sick of the 3% fees that they charge on top of everything. Um, perhaps you're, you know, pro cryptocurrency, pro Bitcoin and you want to, you know, uh, start accepting payments. So this is the kind of course that will get you up and running. Um, what we do, we're going to do is basically take a sort of dummy site called Bitbooks. Um, it's very limited in functionality, but it's basically it meant to be an ebook store. And we'll, you know, take away from the payment flow that we do have and we'll add cryptocurrency payments to it. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun and I'll go through the curriculum as well. So in session one, we basically set up the environment, we get introduced to Bitbooks, um, you know, choose the version of Node we're going to use and yeah, add basically the cryptocurrencies to the payment selection form on Bitbooks then in session two. So there's a little bit of a different format in this one before I continue on. Um, these sessions uh, try to be around 15 to 20 minutes length in time, uh, a lot shorter than what they usually are. Um, however, some of them do end up extending to about 40 minutes, but only a couple. So in session two, we create an orders endpoint. So we basically add an endpoint to get our orders off of, or basically to create a new order and uh, store it in the back end so then, you know, uh, basically assign it a cryptocurrency address. It's kind of slightly different, but you know, normally in a payments list system, you would create an order when they pay, but this one you create an order beforehand, or at least like a purchase order, um, and then you send it to the user. Then in session three, we basically add the order schema to the database and go through all of that. So once we've got the you know dummy, we, we then tie that up with our API. So we're actually return, creating an order and returning that back. Session four, we then query Bitcoin price data, which is very important. So we're converting our US dollar value into Bitcoin value with the live price index. Uh, and we're gonna be using CoinDesk for that. Then session five, we talk uh, about BIP39 and HD wallets. And don't worry too much what they are in that. BIP39 is a, um, a BIP stands for Bitcoin, Bitcoin Improvement Protocol. Um, so uh, proposal, sorry, Bitcoin improvement proposal, um, basically allows you to do higher deterministic wallets. So we, we, it's a really secure way of storing your funds without having to store them, you know, have a node online or anything like that. So your funds aren't going to get hacked as long as you keep that mnemonic phrase, which uh, will go into detail, but as long as you keep that phrase secret, um, your funds will be safe. So it's a really safe way of doing things as you to create, you know, unlimited amount of addresses that you need and you will be able to get those addresses back in the future. So next thing we got is QR codes and BIP21. Um, so BIP21 is, an, is another protocol. It basically allows you to sort of encode data in a string so that you can, you know, get people to send you uh, X amount of coins to a Y address um, and you can encode it into a QR code and it'll work across various different wallets. So that's what BIP21 is. So we'll be getting into that in session six. Session seven, we'll be looking at Socket.io. So we'll be adding WebSocket support to our front end through Socket.io. Um, the reason we chose Socket.io is because it's much, it's, you know, a little bit easier to get up and running quickly. Um, session eight, coin, the coin demon. So we're going to be getting Bitcoin up and running in the test net. We do use test net throughout this um, so that, you know, there's no risk of losing funds. So we'll go into that. We'll talk about how you can get um, for some test net coins for free and basically use that to develop with. Session number nine, then we'll look at wallet and block notifications. So this is tying up into the daemon so that we can get notifications back from um, when we get a wallet update. So when our address is uh, that we've told the daemon to look, you know, keep an eye out of, um, we'll get an update back to our server for that, like a callback. Um, and the same with block notifications. So every time there's a block, we want to just check to make sure that we improve our confirmation on our chance to actions. Um, and then in session 10, we wrap everything up. So we basically add the little things behind the scenes to make sure you know that when you've had enough confirmations of a transaction that you then, you know, send your ebook as in Bitbooks case to the customer. And, you know, you, just basically making sure that everything's secure. So that's it. There's a 10 sessions, quite a lot of sessions, but the sessions are usually shorter than in other videos. Um, we're going to go on in this in JavaScript, Node.js, MongoDB and Vue.js. Um, so yeah, it's a really fun course. I 
hope you enjoy it and look forward to getting started.